The highlight of today's episode is E equals mc squared, one of the most famous equations in all of physics given by Einstein. But what does the equation mean? We usually call this equation as the mass energy equivalence. Now there is an amazing superstition, <laughs> superstition, amazing misconception about this particular equation and that is that mass and energy can be converted into each other. Well that is a wrong statement. They cannot be converted into each other or whatever. So today I'm going to explain to you what the equation is really telling us. In the original 1905 paper given by Einstein, he derived this expression using his infamous famous theory of relativity. And the expression that he gave, he wrote the same thing in a little different format. He wrote it as m equals e divided by c squared. And the reason he wrote it that way is because he's trying to teach us something about mass. We already saw in the previous episode something's horribly wrong with the way we think about masses because they did not add up at the nuclear level. So Einstein is trying to teach us something about mass. If I ask you what is mass, what would you say? Well, we would usually say our high school definition would be the mass is an indicator of the amount of stuff present inside an object amount of particles present inside an object. More the mass for a given object, more stuff must be present inside it. Well, Einstein is telling us that's no longer going to work. We have to redefine what mass means. The best definitions of mass could be something that can be experimentally observed. A, you can think of how much inertia mass, mass is how much inertia it produces. Inertia is the ability to resist acceleration. So that's one. Or another thing about mass is how much gravity it produces or how much weight it feels in a gravitational field. That, those are the good enough definitions of masses, but not the amount of stuff. All right, okay. So to understand this equation, let's take an example. Um, let's say we consider two cups of coffee. Okay, this is cup one, this is coffee one, and this is coffee two. And let's imagine that these two coffees were like, you know, like clones of each other. Identical number of particles exist. The number of coffee particles and the number of particles, everything. Everything is identical. And we put a lid on that. So we have sealed, we have sealed it off to make sure atoms don't evaporate away. Okay. The difference between these two cups of coffee is that one is hot and one is cold. So this guy is hot and this guy is cold. If we use our previous definition of mass, high school definition, that mass is the amount of stuff present inside a body, then according to that definition, both these bodies should have precisely the same mass because they have the same number of particles and all the particles are identical. But according to Einstein, that's not true. The equation is telling us that the coffee which is hot has more mass compared to the coffee which is cold. So the hot coffee, mass of the hot coffee is slightly more than the mass of the cold coffee. That's example number one for us. Let me take a second example. Consider my cell phone. I charge up my cell phone overnight, so early morning when I wake up, my phone has 100% battery. So here is my cell phone with 100% battery. And that's the battery indicator, suppose, okay? But throughout, so that is, that is situation one. So I'm just gonna call it S1. But then throughout the day, I use my phone to chat with people, use the internet, and then talk to people over there. So, so because of that, it's radiating away energy in the form of heat, sound, light, etc. And so eventually, the chemical energy inside the battery of my phone decreases, and towards the night, the battery is almost gone, so it's dead. Again, notice, when you look at these two situations, my phone is the same, the battery is the same, the number of particles in my phone is the same because the only thing that goes out of my phone is the energy. So the number of stuff is the same. Yet Einstein is saying that the mass of this phone in the morning is actually greater than the mass of the phone in the night. In other words, as and when we are speaking right now, even as we speak, the mass of my phone is strictly speaking 
decreasing because it's radiating energy in the form of light and other other forms okay so these two examples clearly uh, they clearly go against our intuition we usually don't think that the mass of the cough, hot coffee and cold coffee I mean we don't think the mass would change depending upon whether it's hot or cold we wouldn't think the mass of a phone would change depending upon whether it's fully charged or it's uncharged so what's going on over here well we'll go back to this equation now the equation is telling us something very deep about mass it doesn't tell that energy and mass can be converted to each other instead what it's saying is that energy has mass that's what the equation says so let me write that down the equation says energy has mass I think that's the best way to interpret this equation once you accept this idea that energy itself has mass, which kind of energy? Any kind of energy. Kinetic energy, energy due to motion, potential energy due to configuration, thermal energy, heat energy, any kind of radiation that you have inside, trapped inside an object, that energy contributes to the mass of the overall object. And now it's very easy to understand these two examples. Think about this hot coffee. Although the number of particles are identical, this coffee has more thermal energy. And that extra energy manifests itself as the part of my coffee's mass. It's the extra mass that makes the mass of my hot coffee more than the mass of my cold coffee. And the same thing is going on over here. Uh, in the morning, the phone of my battery, sorry, the battery of my phone has more chemical energy. And throughout the day, the energy is going out. And as the energy is going out, we are not weighing that energy anymore. And therefore, according to Einstein, what's happening is that the mass of my phone is decreasing. So you understand what Einstein is saying? That energy itself can be weighed it has mass so mass doesn't have to come from matter you don't really need stuff in order to have kilograms you can just have it from energy and it's the same mass that gives us inertia or that makes gravity so strictly speaking a hot coffee has more inertia has more resistance to acceleration compared to a cold coffee and the same case over here so the question is, why don't we notice this discrepancy? Why don't we notice these changes in the mass that happens when we add energy or we remove energy from the system? Why don't we see that? Because we are continuously doing that. Well, the reason is C square. Well, in our day-to-day -day life, the energy that we are dealing with is so incredibly tiny. I mean, let's take an example. When you heat up the coffee, how much energy are you putting in? Well, that depends upon the specific heat of water and to what temperature you are uh, what temperature you're rising it to. But let's let's take an order of magnitude calculation. Let's say the energy that I put inside a cold coffee, let's see, it has 4,200 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius specific heat. And let's say I increase the temperature all the way to 100 degrees Celsius. And let's say I take 100 kilograms of coffee. In all these cases, we'll be dealing with what? I mean, I have taken some insane example. 100 kilograms of coffee. Let's assume 4,000 uh, to be the specific heat of water. And let's say we are increasing its temperature by 100. So this is the specific heat equation I'm using. Let's look at the energy that we're dealing with in, some, in this insane case. It's 4 times 10 to the power 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay? I'm pretty sure on any day we are not going to exceed that amount of energy put into our coffee okay but even in this extreme insane case calculate think about the mass that gets added up the mass that's going to get added up in this example is going to be 4 times 10 to the power 7 divided by c square c is 3 and 10 to the power 8 when you square it you get 10 to the power 16 but there is a 9 so roughly 17 so the mass that we are adding is of the order of 10 to the power minus 10 kilograms and that 
in this case, we can't even get this case, but even in that, the mass that we're adding is just too small. It's of the order of a fraction of a nanogram. Uh, not nanogram, less than that, whatever. It's a fraction of that. And that is amazing when you think about it. That that mass is so tiny that we will never ever notice that discrepancy. But it's there. Okay? And that's why in general, the mass doesn't get added up. Mass of an object is not in general equal to the sum of the masses of the constituent particles. You also have to add or subtract the mass contribution due to energy itself. That's what this is telling us. And therefore, when you look at an atom or you look at a nucleus, you see, when a nucleus comes together, when protons and neutrons come close to each other, or when an electron comes very close to a proton, the potential energy and the kinetic energy change. And these changes in the energy eventually makes its way into the changes in the mass of the composite system. And that's why we are getting a discrepancy at the nuclear level. So, in the previous episode, we asked ourselves, why does the nucleus behave so weird? And the answer is, the nucleus doesn't behave so weird. The, the masses work that way. Masses in general don't get added up. But the reason why in the day-to-day -day life examples we feel like mass is getting added up is because of that C square, because of the contribution being very tiny. But at the nuclear level, the mass itself is so tiny that that tiny contribution now matters. And that's why at the nuclear level the discrepancy was seen and not at our day-to-day -day life level, okay? So this is the whole idea behind mass-energy equivalence given by Albert Einstein. So we will use this, we'll use this and we'll talk more about how mass changes at subatomic level in the upcoming videos. Stay tuned.